Good afternoon, viewers, and welcome to Matters of Public Importance here on Channel 6. I am Bishop Edgill, standing in for Madam Gail Tashira, Opposition Chief Whip, representing the PPPC Members of Parliament and the People's Progressive Party. On this program, we shall focus on matters of public importance, bringing you information and discussion on issues and matters that are of concern to you, the Guyanese public, every Thursday between 12.30 and 1.30, right here on Channel 6. I must apologize to you, our viewers, for the last two Thursdays. Unfortunately, arrangements put in place in this program while Ms. M Madam Tashira was overseas and personal business uh, fell through. Before we get into the meat of the program, let me remind you of the telephone numbers. You can call in, which shall start at about 1 p.m. today. These are the numbers that you can get us. 225-0010, 225-0010, and 225-0008. As I have informed in previous programs, the Office of the Leader of the Opposition is open to the public. We are located at 304 Church Street between New Garden and Peter Rose Street in Queenstown. And we are open Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and on Saturdays from 9.30 to 1.30 in the afternoon. There are various MPs that come in every day to assist and to meet members of the public. Former head of the Presidential Secretariat, Dr. Roger Lundgren, is here Mondays to Thursdays. While former Prime Minister and former President Sam Hines also assist and meet members of the public. Our geographic MPs all have public days at the regional freedom houses in Region 3, 4, 5, and 9. You can call our offices at Church Street at 225 3432. 225 3432. Some of you are already acquainted and familiar with Freedom Radio. This can be found on 91.1 FM in Demerara. That's Freedom Radio, 91.1 FM in Demerara. In Burbies, it's 90.5 FM. And in Essequibo, 90.7. We have corrected some technical problems that we were experiencing before, and we are now able to focus coast to coast on Freedom Radio. So tune in to Freedom Radio. All matters, of, all, all, all matters of public importance programs have two basic themes. They run throughout each one in various forms. The erosion of democracy and the constitution and the lack of transparency and accountability. In, Mar in, in March and April, on this program, we focus on the economy, the erosion of the constitutional and legal provisions with regard to the judiciary, GCOM nominations to the, uh, the chairperson, commission of inquiry into lands, government creating pilot structures to elected bodies to diminish their powers, as we see happening at the RDC level, and citizens' initiative to protect the imposition of the parking meters, VAT on education, and the ban on used tires, as well as the protests of the sugar workers. The program on April 6th focused on the levels of nepotism and corruption in government circles and the reckless and irresponsible actions of the government with regard to the workers of this country and the State Asset Recovery Bill. Today we shall continue to focus on the State Asset Recovery uh, Bill, which was debated April 13th and passed, bullied through the Parliament by the government. And we will also be talking about the State Asset Recovery Unit, as well as a serious organized crime unit, uh, which is SOKU. And while I will uh, be talking a little bit more about SOKU into this program, it will be useful at this time to let the entire nation know that today, at about 11.45 a.m., at his office, in front of clients that he were attending to, former Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, now PPP parliamentarian, and very active 
uh, PPPC Member of Parliament, the Honorable Anil Nandlal, was again arrested by ranks of Soku. And even as we speak here now, we understand through his lawyers, who I have spoken to personally, that it would appear that they are preparing to charge him and take him before the courts this afternoon. So, yes, I would like to publicly make known that the witch hunting, the vindictive behavior of this government, and using state institutions to harass political opponents continue as of today, while this program is being aired live from the studios of Channel 6 here in Georgetown, rants of Soku are preparing to take former legal affairs minister and attorney general, Honorable Anil Nandalal, to court to charge him. And of course, you know, on the frivolous matters of the law books. But we'll be talking more about this. And we know, we know what the end will be as it relates to these matters. So we'll be talking lots more about Sarah and uh, Soku. Let's start by informing our viewers about what is the SARA unit, which was created by the APNUAFC government in 2016 and the State Asset Recovery Bill, which was railed through, through the National Assembly on April 13, uh, 2017. Now, the State Asset Recovery Unit, which is a department of the Ministry of the Presidency that is headed by Professor Dr. Clive Thomas, that has been staffed with known political activists, people who have been in the political hustings in this country over prolonged periods, namely Eric Phillips, Takoma Uginsi, Desmond Trotman, and many other political types that are housed there. The intent of this unit is really to go after previous government officials. On April 13th, when this bill was debated in the National Assembly, I made some very useful interventions which strangely went blank and disappeared as if it never was said. But that's another matter that we will talk about at another time. The government tried to guise the introduction of this bill as a necessity because of us being a signatory to the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. And this bill was to satisfy that convention. Well, I did bring to public notice then, and I bring to notice here, that the government of Guyana, today, the Granger-led administration, cannot be considered as serious in its fight against corruption. And I will give you some examples. Number one, the strongest mechanism that exists in law in our country today to prevent public officials from becoming corrupt or to find them and discover and charge them if they do become corrupt is the Integrity Commission Act. The Integrity Commission Act. The Integrity Commission Act requires that every public official must file declarations with a properly duly constituted integrity commission of all your assets and all of your liabilities. To make a false declaration, you can be sanctioned and it's a criminal offense and it's punishable by jail time and I think a fine. I would like to let the public know that since May 2015, there has been no notice, no document, no sending 
of declaration forms to public officials from the Office of the Integrity Commission for public officials to declare their assets and their liabilities. If you believe that I am misleading the public, well then, let anyone in the Granger-led administration come to public television and declare when and where did they file declarations for 215, 216, and of course, the declarations for 217 is soon to be filed. Number two, even if I as an MP would like to file my integrity commission declaration, of which I want to do, like I've always been doing since I'm in public life, there is no office, there is no one to receive those declarations. There is no functioning integrity commission. So if it is true that the David Granger administration is against corruption, they must answer to the people of Guyana why they have not put in place a duly constituted, well-staffed, adequately financed integrity commission to ensure that all in public life comply with the Integrity Commission Act and we bring us into a place where we could be judged and examined and that we must be able to maintain the highest standards. This is woefully lacking in our country today. So this excuse about the SARA bill is to prevent corruption, hogwash. Secondly, if it is true that the Granger-led administration wants to stamp out corruption, the Audit Office of Guyana is a constitutional office that is empowered by the Audit Act to peruse expenditure in all government and statutory bodies and to be able to publish a report to the National Assembly, which becomes a public document, that all will be able to see what is going on in all the government ministries, government departments, statutory bodies, how public monies are being spent. If you want to fight corruption, why would you cut the budget of the audit office? Preventing the audit office from having adequate staff Adequate staff is lacking at the audit office today. That was made public by the Auditor General himself just a few days ago because the APNU AFC government cut the budget of the audit office so they are unable to pursue, inspect, and investigate wide and far how public monies are being spent so as a, a means of stamping out corruption. So don't deceive the people of Guyana by saying the Sarah bill is to stop corruption. If you really want to stop corruption, number one, put in place the Integrity Commission. Do it now. Stop fiddling with it, saying what you're doing code of conduct and you're revising. There is an Integrity Commission Act. Put the necessary mechanisms in place if you are serious. Finance the audit office. Number three, if it is true that the Granger-led government wants to stop um, corruption and fight corruption, they are in charge of the state today. The Minister of Finance is the minister responsible for National Procurement and Tender Administration Board. Why, after two years, the Minister of Finance have not introduced regulations that will debar contractors or individuals or firms who pay or use their monies or other things to influence government officials and to influence the outcome of contracts. Why there is no debarment legislation or regulations in place? Why are we not publishing in the official gazette the names of companies and individuals, whether they are evaluators, 
whether they are contractors, whether they are firms, whether they are consultants who have engaged in corrupt actions to influence the outcome of contracts or they have paid bribes or they have provided other access to facilities to government officials to influence the outcome of contracts. If you are serious about fighting corruption, you would bring debarment legislation and debarment reg regulations to the National Assembly and make it official so that we'll be able to get rid of corrupt citizens, contractors, consultants, companies, as well as the corrupt evaluators that are influencing the outcome of contracts as alleged by the APNU AFC government while they were in opposition, as alleged by them. Dr. Golsaran, former Auditor General, says that $28 billion is being lost to procurement fraud every year in Guyana. Why no action has been taken? If you believe that that is what was happening, why no action has been taken? So the clear case is, and we could continue to go on and on, this whole issue about SARA and establishing the SARA unit uh, and, and the rest of it about stopping corruption is just gaff. This is a unit that is now being given legal powers. And I will talk a little bit more about the deficiencies of, of, of the SARA bill, which was bully true on Holy Thursday night in the National Assembly. This is to witch hunt political opponents. This is to allow for what is happening right now, while this program is going on, to go after the Anil Nandalals of this country so that you could walk into their office, their home, seize their assets, or you can use the SOKU, which was established to, to, to investigate serious crimes like money laundering and the financing of terrorism, which is now being abused by this government to which hunt political opponents. We need, as a country, to bring this madness to an end. The operatives in SARA, which one of them have any experience or qualifications or expertise, you might want to say, in state asset recovery? None of them are lawyers. SARA or SARU, and now SARA is a, politi is a political henchmen group or a group of political henchmen and this is what the people of Guyana needs to know that Sara which is now in place and Saru which was before is a group of political henchmen to which hunt to go after political opponents I know what that says it is it is simple it is clear that this government, the Great Jalent administration, is admitting publicly that they lack the intellectual prowess, they, they lack the analytical skills, they lack, they lack the ability to negotiate, they lack the ability to present a case, they lack the ability to really govern and manage so they have to now resort to bullyism, intimidation, and tactics that really expose their authoritarian nature and bring to public notice their dictatorial tendencies, which is worse than we would have even seen in the Burnham years. And I'm afraid that that is what is taking place today. We must remember that if it is true that the Granger-led administration is wanting to fight corruption and to really prosecute uh, persons who are involved in corruption or theft of state assets. The 
Director of Public Prosecutions is a constitutional office. It is an office that is empowered by the Constitution to bring advice on criminal charges and to prosecute in the court those who are charged. In the 2017 budget, we must be reminded that the budget of the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution was cut. Just like they cut the money to the audit office, which is to peruse the books and to pronounce on if public monies are being spent properly to ensure that the Auditor General has adequate staff to inspect the books. They cut the money from the DPP's budget as well. So the DPP don't have the necessary resources to hire the lawyers and the staff to prosecute in our courts and to go after those who will steal or embezzle or commit fraud or take away state assets. If you want to recover state assets, empower the institutions that are constitutionally mandated to carry out those functions, but rather they cut the budget of the DPP. But this is what they do. This is how they expose themselves as political witch hunting. But rather, tens of millions of dollars was budgeted for the Attorney General's chambers to hire special prosecutors. Now, it is not about witch hunting. That's what the government would want you to believe. This is all about recovering state assets. You cut the budget of the constitutionally mandated authority to, invest, to, to, to prosecute those crimes. You starve them of the money and staff, but you take tens of millions of dollars and you put it into the budget of the Attorney General's chambers. This is Mr. Basil Williams. He has now been given tens of millions of dollars to hire special prosecutors to go after political opponents. Now, remember we have made public that these special prosecutors who have been hired to investigate members of the former PPPC government are from the law offices of two ministers. These special prosecutors who have been hired and are going to be paid by tens of millions, paid tens of millions of dollars budgeted for the Attorney General's chambers, these lawyers come from the chambers of two present ministers of government. That is what they're doing. And they would like to convince us that they are not witch hunting. I want to give you a list because I'm running out of time. SOKU, the Special Organized Crime Unit, which the PPPC established, I was part of that as a member of cabinet and sat there in a special committee when we needed to ensure that we have mechanisms in place to fight money laundering and the financing of terrorism. And when the opposition was blocking passage of the AML CFT bills in the parliament and they were holding this country hostage Twice they blocked the passage of this bill. It was the PPPC who, by administrative diktat, in order to satisfy recommendations of CFATF and FATF, put in place the Special Organized Crime Unit. The Special Organized Crime Unit was never to be used to witch hunt political op operatives. It was never to be used to deal with everyday fraud. There's a fraud squad at the Criminal Investigations Department. This was to work in support of the Financial Intelligence Unit. When the Financial Intelligence Unit recognizes a suspicious transaction that is taking place, 
that will allow that will, 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 will could be considered money laundering. The FIU should have been the one to say to Soku, investigate A, B, and C. So Soku was put in place to strengthen the investigative capacity of the Financial Intelligence Unit to prevent money laundering and the financing of terrorism. What is Soku being used for today? Soku is being used to witch hunt political opponents of this government. And it would appear that government ministers are the ones directing Soku. When it's supposed to have been the director of the Financial Intelligence Unit who is saying to Soku, look, there's a suspicious transaction. Let's check it out to see if it's money laundering or the financing of terrorism. It will appear that government ministers could now pick up the phone and call operatives of Soku and direct them who to arrest, when to arrest, and how to intimidate, shame them, bring them in, get pictures of them. This person is arrested and that person is arrested. I'm going to give you a list now of all the persons that we know that were close to the PPP and the PPPC that since 2016 and 2017, this government has used Soku to intimidate and harass. Of course, the latest victim being the Honorable Anil Nandalal, who at 11.45 a.m. at his law office, in full view of his old clients, was arrested and taken to Soku, and who knows if he's before the magistrate right now as I speak. Let's start. January 13, 2016. Former Prime Minister Samuel Hines, questioned by Soku. January 13, PPP CMP, Gail Teixeira, questioned by Soku. PPP CMP, Efran Ali, January 13, questioned by Soku. PPP C, Nigel Daramla, questioned January 13 by Soku. Former Nissel employee, Marcia Nadir Sharma, questioned on January 14 by Soku. Former head of the Presidential Secretariat, Dr. Roger Lunch on January 15, questioned by Soku. Former, former Permanent Secretary, Ministry of the Presidency, Omar Sharif, on the Soku probe, June 30, 2016. Did any of these persons conduct a suspicious transaction that the Director of the Financial Intelligence Unit indicated to Soku that he needed to investigate any of these people in 2016? I can tell you the answer is no. Soku was directed by government to go after these people. Let's talk about 2017 now. March 7th, former president and current opposition leader arrested and questioned by Soku. Name and shame, get headlines, embarrass comrade Donna, uh, Barajadio. March 7th, 2017, Former Head of Presidential Secretariat, Dr. Roger Lundgren, arrested and questioned by Soku. March 7th, former Minister of Natural Resources, Robert Pussard, questioned by Soku. Soku detained the daughter of former President, Lisa Vita Ramatar, on Tuesday, March 7, 2017. Former Prime Minister Samuel Hines, again, questioned by Soku, March 8, 2017. Former Education Minister Priya Manichan, questioned on Wednesday, March 8, by Suku. Former Labour Minister Nanda Gopal, questioned March 8, 2017, by Suku. Former Head of the Ghana Water Incorporated, Sheikh Bash, questioned on March 8, 2017, by Suku. Former Housing and Water Minister Irfan Ali, questioned March 8, by Suku. Former Minister Jennifer Westward, questioned on Wednesday, March 8, 2017, by Suku. Former Home Affairs Minister Ro Clement Roy questioned on Wednesday, March 8th by Soku. PPP Central Committee member Kwame McCoy questioned on Thursday, March 9th, 2017 by Soku. PPP Seam Parliamentarian Dan Kumar Siraj questioned on March, in, in March 2017 by Soku. Parliamentarian Nigel Darmla questioned on March 16 by Soku. Former GRDB General Manager Questioned on April 8, 2017 by Soku. Honorable Attorney General,
former Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, questioned and detained April 24th by Suku and today again arrested by Suku. Lisavita Ramatar questioned on April 26th, April 26, 2017 again by Suku. Ladies and gentlemen, Suku, the Special Organized Crime Unit set up by the PPPC administration to investigate money laundering and the financing of terrorism is being used by the Granger-led administration to harass, intimidate, and to witch hunt with a, with a political vendetta members of the previous administration or persons close to the PPP and the PPPC a misuse and abuse of office and process. This is important for us to be able to bring to the public's attention. And that is why we will continue to express our concern about the SARA uh, bill that was bullied through the parliament on Holy Thursday night. And you know, the Grangerland administration is bold bare-faced and brazen. Yes, I repeat that for emphasis. They are bold, brazen, and bare-faced. They have no shame, none whatsoever. Good Friday, the day before Good Friday, when 60 plus percent of this population is preparing for the highest point in the Christian year, they want to hide from the population their shenanigans, their strategies of witch hunting. So they put the debate on the night before Good Friday. When people are busy getting ready for their Easter weekend, so they don't have no time to tune in to listen. And then what is worse, even before the debate could have been ended. Yes, the honorable leader of the Alliance for Change, Mr. Raphael Trotman, rose using the standing order and put the question, and asked that the question be put, sorry, shutting down the debate, denying Mr. Anil Nandalal, former Attorney General, from, from bringing to public's notice the unconstitutionality and illegality and unlawfulness of the SARA bill. Denying attorney at law, Adrian Anamaya, from speaking on this bill. And many other PPPC MPs who would have spoken. Incidentally, he asked that the question be put immediately after I spoke. But there's a particular reason why he asked that the question be put to shut down the debate. Because in that debate, I brought to the public that that bill, once passed and assented to by the president, could be considered colorable legislation, making it void. Because the bill seeks to do indirectly what the government is prohibited from doing directly. The bill seeks to do indirectly what the government is prohibited by the constitution and the laws of our land from doing directly. And that is what makes it colorable and it will be considered void. And of course the PPPC has already indicated that it will be challenged in the court. The bill indicates that the Minister of Finance can give to the director of SARA the powers of a customs officer. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commissioner General and Custom Officers of the GRA do not get their power from the Minister of Finance. They get their power from the Ghana Revenue Authority Act of where there is a governing board. So the bill is asking a minister who don't have the power to give that power to the director of SARU. I pointed that out to the speaker and I asked him that the bill be withdrawn 
because it can be considered colorable legislation. Of course, the speaker sat and listened, did nothing about it. The bill also gives the Minister of Public Security the power to give to the director of SARA the power of a police officer. Ladies and gentlemen, citizens of Guyana, the commissioner of police and policemen and women do not get their power from the Minister of Public Security. The Minister of Public Security is a civilian with no police powers. It is the Police Act that gives to the Commissioner of Police and policemen and women police powers. But in the Sahara Bill, it is the Minister of Public Security who is giving to the Director of Sahara police powers. Those were just two things that I pointed out of how colorable this legislation will be and why it must be withdrawn and corrected. But of course, the government can't listen to correction. They are bold, bare face, and brazen. They have their list already set of who they will be going after, who they will arrest, who they will charge. And of course, to have your name and your photograph on the news charge for corruption because they promise their supporters how all previous government ministers and officials would be wearing prison garments. They would all go to jail. But look what they're fighting people for. What is Anel Nandalal being arrested and charged for? 2,000 US dollars law books, which is made public, that even at the time of their handing over, yes, at the time of their handing over, Mr. Basil Williams knew that Mr. Nandalal's subscription for these law books to the UK firm was being paid by the state. When I was Minister of Ministry of Finance, I received all kinds of financial journals and publications which were paid for by the state. All of the important financial journals from around the world came to the Ministry of Finance to my desk. So as a minister, I could be properly read understand what is happening, have an a, a adequate worldview to be able to make contributions when formulating policies at the level of cabinet. It was part of the benefits of my package as a minister. The same thing applied to the Attorney General. He's the Chief Legal Officer. He had to be able to get in the necessary law reports. So when it's in the middle of the night, the President calls upon him for legal advice, or a minister of the government, he must be able to have access to the best material. Of course, that explains why this government is in so much trouble because of the kind of attorney general they currently have. And that explains why the court has been ruling consistently against the current attorney general because apparently he's not reading, he's not understanding, and he's not giving the best advice. And it will, it will appear that his envy is so strong that he is upset that the Honorable Anil Nandalal has been able to be so successful as an Attorney General advising the PPPC administration and even now as a lead parliamentarian as it relates to legal matters in the current opposition construct that is exposing the incompetence, the mismanagement and the ineptitude of this current government that they are now using Soku to go after him. Well, the courts will vindicate the cause in these matters. It's now 10 minutes after one, and I've been ranting and going for a while, and I would want to open the lines now so that we'll be able to take your calls and uh, be able to, so you'll be able to make your contributions to this discussion this afternoon as we continue to ex expose the vindictive nature of this Granger-led administration using Sara, Saru, and Soku to witch hunt their political opponents. I think we have a caller on. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Very good afternoon. Thank you for joining Matters of Public Importance. Okay. Um, I'm calling pertaining to 
um, the land or the, the homes, the homes in Brian that the, the government mm -hmm. is for sale right now. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to be honest. I'm I I I, I I'm a guy. I don't have more. I don't have much time, and I just wanted to appoint something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, under the CPP government, you used to give the the, the low income people, mm -hmm. the low income people, a hundred seat by four to seat or six to seat, mm -hmm. then for a hundred thousand there and a dollar. Mm -hmm. Now this administration is building homes for low income families mm -hmm. by 20, 20 feet, mm -hmm. 20 feet by 25 feet mm -hmm. for four point something million dollars. And this is low income families. Mm -hmm. in so I think I'm asking the, the opposition you representing the people still? You, 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 the, the, the opposition still got power? Yes, we are using that power to... So, so, to go and see this for several examples for the low-income family. Mm -hmm. Jumble up, pack up. They went straight line. Did you see these things with this little bill? Now, I saw not even a pig or a cow would live inside the place. Well, that is the view. That is the view of this government. They don't believe that people must have liberty, people must prosper. This government is based upon class structure. They are the elites, and everybody else is a, is is is, is a peasants that should not enjoy the good life. One thing is that the government providing materials to the contractors to build the houses. To build the houses at four hundred thousand dollars. How can we get in four point something million dollars for our homes, uh, 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 homes with the land on top of it and the, the material is four hundred thousand dollars dollars? Well we'll be following it through, sir. We will be following through. Thanks for coming through. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, thank you. Thank you, the caller. We have to follow up here on what's happening with the housing situation as it relates to what is taking place. But I don't even know if the government has a housing policy. I don't even know if the government has a housing policy. They're still to present some white paper to the parliament for us to be able to see what is happening. But, um, you know, the Ministry of Communities got three ministers, and I think that's the problem. Anything with three heads is a monster. So they can't get their act together. Three ministers, and they can't get the housing policy together. The numbers on the screen, the numbers to call and to join in this discussion this afternoon, and I'm sure that members of the public are outraged and are continue, continuing to be outraged with the misuse of the political process and political power by the Granger-led administration to persecute, not just prosecute, but persecute, to persecute political opponents um, here in Guyana by using Sara, Saru, and Soku, as in the case of the arrest and impending charges of uh, Honorable Anil Nandalal that took place at about 11.45 a.m. at his office um, today. I'm sure you'll be hearing more about that in the news this afternoon. We, we, you can call us. Um, the numbers are on the screen so that you'll be able to join the discussion um, here. Of course, you, you will see that um, Saru is, has also been misused in going after areas where the PPP has a stronghold. For example, the seizure of the computers, which is the property of the Enmore NDC. Honorable Anil Nandalal, of course, has filed a case against them. And of course, they are in a quandary right now as to what to do. So we have another call on the line. A very good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Good afternoon. I'm calling in concerning the VAT on education. Uh -huh. Why is it that the government put in this VAT on education? Is that punishing the poor? Mm. Look around today in society, our young people, I'm also a young person, I'm 22. Mm -hmm. My younger friends are also in the village who ain't got much education. They find a time for smoke drugs, 
drink rum, step on the road, cause in fight, commit crime. And education is something that we all need mm -hmm. to move forward for a better future for our young people. Well, just to let you know that the Honorable Priya Manichan has tabled a motion which is to de be debated on May 8th, which is next Monday. Not Monday coming, the following Monday, May 8th. Yes. I've seconded that motion, calling upon the government to remove the VAT on education. And it will be one way of testing the sincerity of the AFC, who seems to be dancing around trying to regain their independence. But when the budget was read, and all of the bills were being passed, and we spoke and we called upon the government not to put VAT on medical supplies and on education, the AFC voted with the government to ensure those bills were passed, and now they're saying something different. So Monday the 8th would be the great test of decency, I would put it this way, in this country, because we have tabled a motion in the name of the Honorable Priya Manichan, former Minister of Education, and it is to be debated on May the 8th, calling upon the government to revoke this order that places VAT on education. Because we in the PPPC are totally against VAT on education, VAT on uh, medical services, VAT on water, VAT on electricity. VAT. We want the orders to be revoked and the VAT regime that obtained before budget 2017 to be restored so that the people can get on with their lives freely. We are against this madness. Especially, that the people... mm. Mr. Edgell, mm -hmm. it's an evil something to do, I call it, because look at our country, they got much educated people, young people in jobs, and mm -hmm. so that guy going to be something better. So that right. to show to the other countries that Guyana is a better something. All right, I got another call on the line, so thanks for coming through. Yes. Caller, welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Juan Edgell. Yes, ma'am. Um, last night, Mr. Ramjet, an honorable, was on Channel 6. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about the fat on education. Mm -hmm. And he said that how they done put, you know, put forward this budget for this year. Uh -huh. So, they would not, um, so how he's saying that, going back to the parliament, so he... To me, to knowledge, it's the same thing. They would not vote, they would vote down this bill again. Well, May 8th will tell the story about their insincerity. You know, it's easy. Yes. Th this APNU AFC convenience that has been formulated, that is now installed as government, yes. they have deceived the people of Guyana in so many different ways. Yes. I was listening to a comedian from Nigeria the other day. And he was talking about Nigerian politics, and I thought it was, it was it is relevant for Guyana. He says in Nigeria, the politicians promise change, but from day one, they changed their promise. Yeah. And that is what they did. They changed their promise. They promised change, but they changed their promise. And then he also said, you know, in Nigeria, yeah. you used to hear about how government officials are corrupt, yeah. but now corruption is official. Corruption is official. So they had a lot of fancy talk. Yeah. Be before the elections, but this is what they're doing now. And we have VAT on education because the AFC supported the APNU to impose it. Yes. So they can't come now and lie and say they were never free. And they, if they want to change, join with the PPPC and vote to revoke it in the parliament on May 8th. They wouldn't do that because like how we said the last night, mm -hmm. he say, he's telling you that the people of Guyana, he's saying that the fact is already an education and they would not, and how he, he only left to say like, to me like wasting time because what this government doing, they're showing the people, they have the power, they have everything. Well, we want to show you, ma'am, and all of our other viewers. All the time. We in the PPPC will continue to fight, champion the causes of the ordinary people of this Guyana of Guyana and we will represent the views of all the citizens of Guyana and we are putting this matter to the National Assembly the highest decision-making forum for debate and decision and May 8th we are looking for a victory where the VAT on education will be revoked. When Let's come 2020 mm -hmm. he must do the same thing mm -hmm. and then he will know where the voter will go. Yes. Right. 
But um, minister, former minister. Thank you very you know, much. We have felt and feeling a lot of strain mm -hmm. uh, because the cost of living, every single grocery item raised in the shop. Mm -hmm. And then he's them saying that how you put on the light and water. And that's all people lying and then paying mm -hmm. 1500 But we paying the VAT because the manufacturer pay more. Mm -hmm. So manufacture these things. So they put it on we, the poor people. So yes. them like them thinking about themselves, but not we the poor people. All right, thank I you very know. much, ma'am. Thank ma you very much. Thank you very much, ma'am. The views of the people coming through here on matters of public importance, addressing the issue of removal of VAT on private education. This is such a horrible action, an injustice, uh, uh, a nonsensical, uh, unexplainable uh, move that I, I, I really am running out of adjectives to find out what was in the thinking of this administration when they placed such an imposition on uh, the people of Guyana. I have another call on the line. Good afternoon and welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Good afternoon. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. Ran Japan. Mm -hmm. Nagamoto. Mm -hmm. Not only fool the people them, forget the vote, after they go in Parliament, they forget what the people them. Mm. You must understand one thing, that they must have got that close on sugar, close on sugar, close on, and all the sugar say they want close. And you know what happened in this country? You got fall flat, flat. But that one side, the NIS, mm -hmm. never have money for pay all its pension. What will happen then? They will subsidize it. They will take the money and they will do other things with them, and where they give the people who are living for it. Up to now, they can. They take big money for themselves. You know what they want? They want to come with a big pension. When they come up, if they're going to say tomorrow, they resign. He got a big pension for his channel. Yes. Very, very big pension. And then I get millions of dollars, millions of dollars a year. Right. Then I get comfortability. But then people want wage increase. Then I get a promise twenty percent, and they can get five percent help. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, yes, you can come through with your views here on matters of public. Importance. I have another call on the line. Good afternoon. It's your turn. Good afternoon. Well, the fact that we have freedom of expression in Ghana allows people who are intolerant, people who are intolerant of the views of others to come through on TV. A very good afternoon and welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Hello, caller, you're on air. Caller, you're on air. Well, it looks like people are tying up the phone lines, you know. We have those in society who are in very intolerant of the views of others. A very good afternoon and welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Oh, good afternoon, sir. I should have got this workshop for all uh, the people. That's a workshop for the minister, eh? Because I can't see a man that we could have 25 budgets and we use curtains and all that thing that we find the institution and all this mess here, you know? The workshop for what? For the big ministers that are right now. Mm -hmm. They're going to keep a workshop for them? workshop for all the people single pay attention to the work. What happened to them? They're going to create some for them because I don't think they're doing anything for them. All right. All right. Thank you for your view, comrade. Good afternoon. Yes, we have another call on the line. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Hello? Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Well, please, if you don't plan to contribute towards the program, don't call and tie up the phone lines. There are others who want to express their views, and that is what freedom of expression is all about. We, 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 we have a situation in the parliament where opposition speakers and opposition views are being shut down. We have a minister who's standing up in the middle of a debate, even before some key presentations are to be made. I now ask that the question be put and the speaker allowing it. We can't allow that even on television. Good afternoon and welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Your turn. Good afternoon. Yes. Mr. Nigel. Nigel. Mr. Ajil. Mr. Ajil. Ajil. Mm -hmm. This government will be got here. Mm -hmm. It's just running on this country. They're talking a lie, a bunch of lies, fooling the people. And what they're doing there, they're doing nothing. Mm -hmm. They're just wasting time. Mm -hmm. They need to kick out from the government. All right. Thank you for your view, comrade. Yes. People are becoming frustrated. 
a government that is not delivering. Promise change, but change their promise. That is what that, that is what is happening. They promise change, but then day one, they change their promise. They're not doing what they're doing. Busy, rather than improving the economy, rather than creating jobs, rather than win investors to Guyana, which hunting political opponents, locking up people, arresting former president, arresting former HPS, carrying in government ministers to Soku, getting headlines, harassing them. Good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Good afternoon, sir. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know, um, GPL, right? Mm -hmm. Give me a bell. For the 13th of last month, I was a bit of 13th of this month, right? Mm -hmm. And then 10 now, the reading meter, the 19th of this month. Mm -hmm. And now I got to pay VAT on this five day, right, for my GPL. Mm -hmm. That could be right. Well, we, I'll have to look at the case. If you come to the lead of the opposition office with your bill, We'll be able to, at 304 Church Street, we'll be able to help you and probably get the Public Utilities Commission to assist you as well. So, uh, so come down to the Church Street, 304 Church Street, opposite the Border Cricket Ground, uh -huh. Office of the Leader of the Opposition, we'll help you there. What about Freedom House? Freedom House is good too. Okay, I'm going to send my wife out to my already next. All right, good. Good, sir. Thanks. Yes, people, it's your turn to talk to us. And your voices are very important. So we'll take in a few more callers. A very good afternoon, matters of public importance. A very good afternoon. You're on to matters of public importance. It looked like that caller plans to tie up the line all afternoon, calling from a private number. Yes, good afternoon. Welcome to matters of public importance. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to matters of public importance. We have people who are calling with private numbers just tying up the phone lines. Good afternoon and welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Good afternoon. Yes. Uh, Mr. Edgar, I, I want to say something. You're talking about the uh, government saying for job for people. Now, the president is saying in television that he cannot find job for all the young people. Mm -hmm. They got some micro loan and, and whatever small business they're going to give people. Or you're going to pay back the business. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, Ram Japan need to come to all the police say, and see how much time that people make report, how much more, three months, and no police, nobody has to come and visit you, especially the BB station. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And just sing around on the television and say, he's doing this and he's doing that. Come out and see what's going on in the book. He can't go to meet the people. The people will chase him. That's, that's what's happening. Because people know you that hard. A lot of the government ministers cannot face the people. they got to stay in the air-conditioned office and right. the air-conditioned vehicle and travel overseas and get big fat per diem to get rich. They can't oh. go and talk to the ordinary people. Oh, the, 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 the education, in Bonham time, you never had what for education. Mm. The, PPP time, the Constitution never had guarantees free yeah. education from nursery to university. In Mr. High time, you never get a Bonham time, you never get fat or water like this. Right? But Winston Maurice, this, this man here, I, I don't know what Jordan, the Jordan, have. Winston Jordan is the man. Yeah, I don't know, he's a kind of finance minister, so he needs to go back to school. All right, oh. comrade. Okay, thank we'll you. We continue to struggle. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Yes, good afternoon. We are, we are starting to wind up, so I'll probably just take two, two quick calls, and then we will wind up. Uh, remember, we'll be back here next week, um, 12.30 to 1.30, and every Thursday, 12.30 to 1.30, on matters of uh, public importance, where we continue to express our views. We will want to continue to hear you. Yes, good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Hello, welcome to Matters of Public Importance. I'll have to take that caller who's trying to tie up the lines. Good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. We have people who are calling all afternoon on private lines, boat lines, and when you answer, they're tying it up to prevent people from expressing their views. Good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Well, this seemed to be a new strategy to suppress the views of the Guyanese people, where you probably have people who are in a central location like what they do now with the trolls that are blogging on the social media who can seek to tie up the phone lines and to prevent people from 
expressing their views. But as an opposition, we will continue to give voice to the people. We will continue to represent your interests and we will continue to express your views. Good afternoon. Welcome to Matters of Public Importance. Final call. Good afternoon, Mr. Edith. Yes. I can't uh, ask you about this thing. We had a uh, protest on the party meeting. Uh -huh. Protest on the party. Protest on the tires. Then we got protest on the uh, sugar state, right? Mm -hmm. But they got the Millennium Arrows in power, right? They got the Massachusetts. You can't walk the black yard. You dare the camera on the mic. I ain't seen you there. I seen it this protest. A man used to come with what? With a mic and a camera. I don't know who is that. Yeah, you know when you are having you have any power. Uh -huh. All the protest used to that. And asking the people who were around, but I ain't seen it this protest. Okay, I gotta find out who is that. I I'm not so familiar with it. Oh. All right, thank you. Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this is where we have to take our leave on this program this afternoon, but before I leave, we would want to express our public outrage at the Granger-led administration for using institutions of the state, namely the Saru unit, soon to be named Sara, and Soku, to which hunt, victimize, and politically persecute members of the previous administration. This vulgarity must come to an end. It's an abuse of political power, it's an abuse of process, and it's a misuse of office. And with these words, we'll have to say goodbye until next Thursday for another program of Matters of Public Importance, 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. right here.